Well, we have a game here in Washington. It's the Tennessee Titans five-point underdogs against our Washington Commanders. Is this a code red game? Well, we're going to find out here right now. Welcome to episode 201, The Cooldown. Is it going to be a titanic win for the Washington Commanders coming up here? Gregory saying, hey, this is a code red game. We lose this. You can mark it down. We don't even make the playoffs. Do you guys agree that this game, this pivots the season more mm -hmm. so than the Cowboys game? You mm -hmm. lose this one, and you might as well just not win another one the rest of the season. This is a massive game. I don't want to think that you might as well not win because we got to we got to beat the Cowboys whether in the playoffs or not. That's our Super Bowl now. But yeah, it's this is this is a must win game, must win game. So. Doesn't get any bigger than this game. Everything is uh, everything is kind of lining up against you at this point, right? You've lost yeah. three games in a row. Uh, yeah. You're feeling really down about yourselves. You do have that whole tired and every, a lot of guys are really banged up. You're looking forward to the off week, the next week, right? That sometimes you can start looking ahead a little bit too much on something like yeah. that. But yeah, if you go four losses in a row and two of them are to two really bad teams, really bad teams, then you're going to start losing locker rooms. You're going to start losing all that brotherhood that they talked about. Yeah, this is this couldn't be any bigger of a game. Well, Dan Quinn talked about that a little bit. You know, all that talk is fine and dandy when you're winning. It's really going to matter when you're not winning with a three-game losing streak. And the Titans not winning in our poll right now, but they do have 27%, which is significantly higher than quite a few of our other uh, polls that we have. I mentioned Bet Online has them at 55 underdogs the tennessee titans that being said they were underdogs last week against the houston texans in houston mm -hmm. and tennessee won i know this is a week-to-week -week league and what happened last week doesn't necessarily translate to this week yeah but how does that tennessee victory feel to you guys going into this game uh my eyebrows are raised definitely picked houston to beat uh the snot out of tennessee Especially since they, you know, had that big offseason addition with Legarius Sneed, who we all wanted here as a quarterback, one of the top three agents this past offseason is now an IR. Um, but they went into Houston and beat the team that everybody's saying that we are mocking this year, uh, the Houston Texans. Mm. Very, very shocked. Has my eyebrows raised. Also not because of that, because of how we've been playing the past few weeks mm -hmm. and how our run defense has been all season long. They have Tony Pollard over there. Some people might laugh at that, but he was a better running back than, than Zeke in Dallas, and they kept the wrong one. They let him go and then brought back Zeke. Mm -hmm. Will Levis seems like he's trying to correct his mistakes that he was showing out the first few weeks of the season. He's got a rocket. This Westbrook receiver... He's coming on to this bigger stage now. He's like catching a lot of touchdowns. I don't really know anything about their defense. Since with Snead out, I think their defense can be had, but it just feels like they could come out and punch us in the mouth and we can make adjustments and, and take over. But I don't want that to happen because, like you said, we get punched in the mouth. We don't react to it until the fourth quarter. And by that time, we're depending on Hail Marys, 86 yard bombs onside kicks hmm. we're depending on all this other stuff and i i'm tired of that identity that we've been showing in the past few weeks you know, so stoner, yeah, I, I'm nervous I, yeah stoner i know you have some stats on the defense i don't know if you want to let those out now we'll let trev get his news and notes together for a little tnn oh, yeah. here so trev why don't you get that and we'll hit that a little bit after stoner gives us some of his numbers on this tennessee titans defense which surprisingly Mm -hmm. Pretty strong, despite being very mediocre, if not underachieving on points per game, Stoner. Yeah, this defense is legit, legit, legit. Big times. Big time. They are number one. Not number two, not number three, not number four. They are number one in the NFL against the pass. 
So think about that for a second. That's crazy. They are they are number two overall in yards. So they don't give up a lot of yards overall. They're eighth against the rush. Eighth. Now their points per game, they're 27th. So I had to do a deep dive on that, right? And figure out what's going on there. Well, yeah. Will Levis has three pick sixes. Mm-hmm. They've given up a blocked punt return for a touchdown. They've given up a punt return for a touchdown. And on they've turned the ball over 21 times. Oh, they, wow. A minus 12 in the turnover margin, right? Which is 31st in the league. 21 giveaways. And on those 21 turnovers, they have uh the teams have scored points on 12 of those turnovers. Think about that for a second. So that's where the points per game comes in, why they're so low. Three pick sixes from Will Levis this year. He's only played in six and a half games. And he's had three big six. You should look at the the Detroit game, what they did against Detroit. Now Detroit's a beast, right? But here's yeah. here's their turnovers against Detroit. Um, interception at their own twenty three yard line. Detroit turned that into a touchdown. Uh, interception at their own thirty three yard line. Detroit turned that into a touchdown. Detroit had a punt return touchdown. They had a fumble at their own twenty six yard line that Detroit turned into a touchdown. <laughs> and then they had um, another turnover on the other end of the field that didn't get turned into points. But the Lions just absolutely took advantage of every um, mistake that they made on offense. So that their defense is legit. Offense, not so much. Yeah, offense so might struggle, but their defense is pretty good. And you know who else is pretty good? <laughs> Matt here with a 1999 hey. Super Chat donation. We appreciate you, Matt, and happy Thanksgiving to you, too. We'll be talking some Thanksgiving after the little bit here on uh, – after the game here is considered. So, pr- Matt, appreciate you, Matt, with that Super Chat donation. All right, you guys know what time it is. You guys love what time it is. Let's hit that TNN. <laughs> For all your commander's news and notes, it's the TNN Here's Trev. And I I gotta stop before we get to the TNN, Trev. I just love that everybody loves that intro, and it was totally just a random thing, Stoner voiced, and we were looking to replace it. But after having played it a few times, Stoner, I don't think we can. Uh, I think no, it was no. Look, TJ Two Nasty said it right when it popped up. Here's, Here's Trev. Trev. Everyone, everyone loves that intro, so we we got to keep it. Yeah, you know, there's no, oh, no nobody's that. gonna replace that. Not AP, not AI. Uh, so Trev, give yeah. us a lowdown on your news and notes. Well, the first official injury report came out today for this game on Sunday. Um, I can pretty much say off the top of my head the important ones: Zach Ertz, Colleen Farrell did not practice today; they were uh, resting. Then we have Austin Eckler and Andrew Wiley, both in concussion protocol, did not practice today. Real quick on the Austin Eckler note, we might have to find a new kick returner, which sucks because he's been the most productive one we had. Mm-hmm. Never saw that coming, honestly. Never thought he'd have that role. But uh, I know you can get a concussion on any hit, but I feel like that is playing a role in these concussions and these injuries he's, uh, he's suffering. A bigger workload that we've asked him to do by being a kick returner. But that's just something to keep a watch on if he gets healthy again, if they're going to put him back there or, or not. Uh, Andrew Wiley, no matter how good he's played or not, it sucks he's in percussion protocol because we don't have a very good depth or deep offensive line. Yeah, we have Trent Scott and Cornelius Lucas, but they are Trent Scott and Cornelius Lucas for a reason. Mm-hmm. So that's a huge blow. But notice I didn't say a certain somebody who was a DNP. A certain somebody is limited today by the name of Marshawn Lattimore. Ladies and gentlemen, he had his helmet on. He was out there doing some individual drills, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Dan Quinn said it was, they are sure glad to have him on the field. I think he's going to get a more rigorous practice tomorrow or something like that. So we'll see how it goes. But he is on the field and he is limited. So that might be pointed to a good sign coming for Sunday. And everyone else who was on there, no Igbeni, they're all full participants. So nobody really missed any time. I think we're coming, we're pretty healthy right now. But the Austin Eckler and Andrew Wiley are two huge losses. Oh, B-Rob is on there with limited action because he has an ankle injury now. He's got to be so frustrated, man. 
We really mm. thought that he could thrive in this offense this year and, and be really productive. And when he's healthy, super healthy he is, but he's been injury plagued all season long, which could kind of further hurt his career that if it goes beyond Washington. You know, he might be looked at as an injury plagued kind of guy now, kind mm. of a jag. As Stoner has to his defense, he said B Rob has been a jag since I don't know where, but I don't know how he saw that coming, but he did. And Yes, our running game is bad, but when he's in there healthy, like I said, it, it's a little bit productive than what it is. So we've got to keep an eye out on that. He did say he put strength on that, which surprised him today, but it wasn't a really hard day. It was kind of a light day, but yeah. he's in good spirits. He says he's looking, expecting to play Sunday if all goes well. So we'll see what happens. Um, John Kime said that uh, Bobby Wagner addressed the team today. Mm-hmm. And Bobby Wagner came out saying that we got a great team. We just got to go out and out there and execute and prove that. We don't have to worry about what people are saying outside or what other people are thinking. Said they'll be fine if they like this. Uh, a little note on that, they are paying attention to what people are saying. I know some people are like, oh, I don't watch that. I don't watch that. This team is watching it or hearing it. Um, it's also cool to see Bobby Wagner taking over that leadership role that we expected him to have because years in the past, leaders who we thought we had on the team, we never heard about when we were in a slump, you know, such as spoke to the team, called a player it's only meeting or something like that. that uh, you never heard that. This year you're hearing it. So that's good to know that the locker room is probably where we want it to be. Um, and I agree with Bobby Wagner. If we just execute the game plan, whatever it is, we have mm-hmm. a chance. And I know if we have five back there, we have a chance. But if we have five back there, plus the offense that we ran to get us seven and two, we – the fraud questions will go away. The rookie of the year questions will go away. We'll be winning. The playoff questions will go away. You know, they'll just be a success. So a couple of key injuries, like I said, with Eckler and Wiley, and then a good team leadership is, is shown with Bobby Wagner taking over the, the leadership role in the locker room. So looks like things are trending for Sunday to, to go well. I don't Real quick think, before uh, owner, you talk here, uh, Matt asked about B-Rob doing okay. So Trev touched on a little bit. Trev, he's – Got yeah. an ankle injury, but he said he put on some weight and he's pretty optimistic. Yeah, he was limited today. He's pretty optimistic if it all goes well the rest of the week, he'll play on Sunday. So I don't know if that's a serious injury, but he so he practiced today. So we'll see. Mm. But he's always injured. Yeah. <laughs> I think it, I think he's gonna play. I don't think well, I know Eckler's not gonna play. No. I don't think Wiley's gonna play. And of course, um, we didn't mention like Cybert went on the IR. You did mention oh, yeah, yeah. Went way earlier. He went on yeah. IR, so it's going to be uh, uh, Zane. Is it Zane Gonzalez? Zane Gonzalez. Yeah. And Chris but, Rodriguez. Uh, so Zane Gonzalez, for the record, still on the practice squad. He'll be a practice uh-huh. squad call up. And they can do that because I think they actually have one or maybe two more times with Gonzalez on the practice squad. And yeah. going into the bye week gives you some options as far as that. So signing them to the 53 limits you on your player ability. So they're keeping them there on the practice squad, but we'll call them from the game saying Gonzalez is there. But they did sign Chris Rodriguez to yeah. the 53. Mm-hmm. They had seen, to, right? Yeah, they they oh. had to. I mean, well, they could sign him to the practice team. squad. No, I thought he was out of practice squad call ups. So because they released him, they were allowed. They could yeah. they couldn't Start put over. him back. Yeah, they could put him back on. I don't think they can call him up, but uh, the they did put him on the fifty three, and large in part he's taken Cybert spot right now. Who went to IR? You got to figure something's going to be up with Eckler. We might not see him back in time. So they might, uh, you know, deactivate him, see if they can uh, f- afford a short-term <clears throat> IR and get him back for the playoffs. Uh, do you guys think Chris Rodriguez is a guy who we know isn't necessarily special, but we think can run the way that Washington needs to run, but they haven't been using him. Do you think we're going to see a little bit more of Chris Rodriguez, or is this going to be the McNichols and B Rob show until B Rob has to take a seat? Oof. If they signed him, it's funny you asked that question because they also brought in two running backs this week for a workout. I forgot to mention James Robinson, former Jaguars running back, and former Eagle standout Boston Scott as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I don't know how to answer that question. I don't know if, if it's going to be one of those cases where they they call him up again and they don't use him, and they just go with the Nick McNichols and B Rob, or they do all three at this like a running back by committee for all three. I don't know. 
But they like him, obviously, to keep letting him go and resigning him and let him go and resigning him. So maybe he gets used more this week. Um, I don't know. But like you said, Nathan, I think this is a huge con- contribution to why we cannot run the ball because we haven't had a consistent running back room since week one or two, pretty much. I called B Rob a Jag, right? I mean, C Rod is not even on that level. He's yeah, not yeah. even up to Jag level. So he's let's... just. <laughs> He's, he's he's just right. He's, he's a practice squad guy. I mean, well, let's be fair. He is a, he is a guy who's ended up on the practice squad, late yeah. rounder. I'm not <laughs> I'm not trying to sing his praises so much than think that he is great. Gus Bus saying here that he thinks C Rod's the best natural yeah. runner that we have. I do, and and Gregory loves him as well. I do like the one cut style and the power that he uses, which I think would benefit Washington because one of the reasons why this offense is better with B Rob running the ball than Eckler or McNichols is the power and the decisiveness Mm -hmm. to do that. Eckler's way more of a patient runner, more of that back who's trying to find that open space and takes the yardage there, there, right? He's a space guy. Mm -hmm. McNichols takes a little bit after that as well. So the struggles really come from the fact that Washington's trying to do a lot of these inside runs and they can't do it when Brian Robinson's out of the game. So that's why I'm imploring that we see a little bit more of Chris Rodriguez if Brian Robinson cannot go against the Titans. I mean, C Rod to me is you you love him, right? He's just one of those guys. We always love the backups. We always love sure. the guys who are on the practice. James Patterson. Squad. Jarrett Patterson. Yeah, exactly. You love him until you give him the ball 16 to 18 times in a sure. game, and then all of a sudden you're like, I was about uh, to say. I was going to say, he really hasn't had a huge workload back there being a running back. He's a spotty running back of the year. You see him in spurts. You see him against, uh, you know, backups in the the preseason. You see him in a Mm -hmm. fourth quarter of a game that you're winning by 20. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, yeah, I like this guy. Well, give him 16 to 18 carries against the Eagles, and you're going to find out why he's been (laughs) released and cut and signed of the practice squad, brought up. He's Mm – he's. He's fine. He's a body. Sure. And, and he can do, he's capable. Mm. That's what I'll say about him. He's capable. He'll go out there but, and he'll do some things and he'll pick up some blocks, you know, in uh, on but, blitzes and stuff. But you just but don't Tennessee want Tennessee ain't game plan. Though. Tennessee is no. not still going. They, Nobody they game planning for, for Chris Rodriguez. Care. His uh, career high in carries, by the way, came this year against the Giants. Eleven carries for fifty-two yards. Oh, is he's running at a four-three average this year, and last year he ran at a four-eight average. Although that is filled with several games like against Arizona, where it was a three rushes, mm-hmm. seven yards. Um, that might not have looked so good, or against the Rams, 10 rushes for 35 yards. So that's kind of where you're coming for at Stoner, right? Like giving them those extra carries might not necessarily prove to be extra yards, but it is something Washington needs to get back to and getting that time of possession. What else does Washington have to do against this strong Tennessee defense, which We've had challenges like this before for Washington. Right. They've gone up against tough defenses, and they've managed to put up points. Can they do it again? What do what does Cliff Kingsbury need to do? Because we've talked a little bit about his his dipping, Stoner. I don't know if you want to talk about it now, but this offense seems to be kind of stagnant right now. We talked about how it went from prolific to middle of the pack. What needs to happen to change things up? Well, listen, they absolutely – I think Trev's making the motions that the open open up the offense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. They've, You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. Your best weapon is Jaden Daniels. If you, a lot of people will say, get Terry the ball, Martin. fine. But your best weapon is Jaden Daniels. And the mm-hmm. best part of your best weapon are his legs. Mm-hmm. You've got to get – you've got to incorporate more of him running – into the game plan against a defense that, again, I mentioned it, number one against the pass, okay? Don't be stubborn and say, I don't care. We're going to throw it 35 times anyway. You know what they're good at, so don't try and be stubborn and keep doing that. So they've got to get back to running the ball, and they've got to do more of Jaden Daniels running the ball. Then they can open it up, as Trev was motioning, right? Throw the ball downfield a little bit more. 
Maybe people haven't done that enough against Tennessee, throwing the ball downfield. Maybe they haven't tried that enough. And so I think that's the best way to attack this defense because they are awfully good at what they do uh, against the pass. So they've got, so Washington needs to run the ball more. And even with all the struggles that we talk about with the rushing attack for Washington, they're still fifth in the league in running the ball. They're still the fifth best rushing team in the entire NFL. The biggest reason though, Trev, is not B-Rob. It's not uh, Austin Eckler. It's because you're getting all those yards from your quarterback. 556, he's our leading rusher. He's the leading rusher on this team. So yeah. they've got to take advantage of it. They're fifth in the league in in running Brian the ball. Robinson, by the way, with 537 for those. Uh, and he's one, missed so. more games than. Yeah, than he's played three less games. So Brian Robinson likely would have been. Uh, the leading sure. rusher had yeah. he not. He is running. Brian Robinson's running at a four-four clip, so not too terrible there. Uh, we are going to have to see if Brian Robinson's healthy. We're going to have to see that run game. I, this is one of those ones where I just hope that we don't let Tennessee in it. Right? Mm-hmm. Let's go back to the games where, like against Carolina, uh, against Arizona, where you just put them on their heels. And force it into Levis's hands, who has proven time and time again to be a bad decision maker. Right. Washington is on the positive side of turnovers, but that's largely because their offense hasn't turned it over. It's not necessarily because that their defense has been able to turn it over. Trev, do you foresee that defense, Lattimore or not, being able to stop Will Levis from running up and down the field as he did against the Houston Texans? Oh, man. Yes and no. I think our defense, our defense has gotten better since the early part of the season. I'll be honest, it has. We're not. We're still a bend don't break for the most part until mm. the end fourth quarter. But I, I think we do if we don't shoot ourselves in the foot. That's what we give all these whack quarterbacks their glory days is because we shoot ourselves in the foot. There's no reason why Cooper Rush should be five and one against us. It's because we self inflict. He's not beating us. We're getting deep. We're getting penalties. We're getting DPIs. We're doing this. We're not. We're giving him all the time in the world. If if I had an offensive line, if I had if, yeah, if I was behind an offensive line with zero pressures, all three of us could be NFL quarterbacks. That's, That's how Tom right. Brady's so successful. No offense That's to Tom right. Brady, but if it wasn't to have an O line, we probably wouldn't have seven rings. He's a quick decision so, maker too. So that yeah, helps. too. Yeah, but if you give a quarterback time, you. <laughs> It's all, it's all it takes. I 100% agree game. with that. It's given time. If I was I mean, back there on that Dallas, as a Dallas quarterback last week against Washington, I could have completed 70% of my passes. Like exactly. So we just got to come out and, and play fast, physical, and violent. We got to treat this team like the 3-18 and 18 that they are. We can't just go in there and be conservative and – do this and do that. We got to be aggressive and execute the game plan. We keep hearing St. Juice every week about we can fix these details. And everybody's saying all the details they can fix. Well, now is the time to do that because, like Stoner said, if we lose to a guy who puts mayonnaise in his coffee, man. We can, we get to, a, can we get a game bet for Stoner? Can you put mayonnaise in coffee buy. and drink it on the instant reaction? We might no. take a buy on week 14, too, if, if that happens. So I'm just, and that's what just, I just worry because it's the type of player, him and Tony Pollard, if we beat ourselves, they could have go off days. You know what I mean? So it's this defense is, it's questionable. Yeah. We don't know what we're going to get. We don't know if we're going to start off on slow or start off fast. It's just, let me give you, I don't know. Go ahead. I was going to say, I'm going to give you a couple of notes uh, on this game. Right. So that of course Tennessee's three and eight, as you keep mentioning, right? This yeah. is their seventh this is Washington's seventeenth game, right? This is their add-on game mm-hmm. at the end of the year. This is the last place schedule game. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. So their last place schedule they played the Chicago. AFC South team they play, yeah. 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 They they played Chicago and Arizona and beat both of them. And this is their other last place schedule game that's different from every other team in the division. So, and and this year they're proving to be another last place team. They've got three wins. Their three wins are 
at Miami. That was actually a, a good win, right? Mm-hmm. And it was when Miami game. was without Tua and I think the running backs, though, right? I think they, oh, they were missing yeah. quite a bit. It definitely game. was. Um, that was week four. <laughs> then they beat the Patriots in week nine in overtime. And that was after Drake May had that crazy play the week after yeah. Jane Daniels did the Hail Mary. And then Drake May had the basic, almost a Hail Mary type play where he's running around, running around, running around. And then they ended up uh, winning anyway. Um, Tennessee did. And then, of course, last week they beat the Texans after Fairbairn, who's a very good kicker, missed a 28-yard field goal to tie the game. 28. You think our kicker, we wanted to kill him. Their (laughs) kicker had a 28-yarder to tie the game against a bad team. And so that was a bad loss by them. But, uh, yeah, so you're playing a bad team. Will Levis has been sacked 35 times in seven games. So he's prone to get sacked. We've talked about his interceptions, nine interceptions in seven games. And three three of those are pick sixes. But what they do well is they run the ball. As you mentioned, Trev, Tony Pollard is fourth in the league in rushing. Fourth. Wow. In the league in rushing. He's at 800 yards already. I have him at seventh, but. Oh, seventh. Sorry. Yeah. So I, I overstated that. But still, he's, he's right him. up there. He's at yeah. 800, 800 yards. 800 yards is no joke. Yeah. Yeah, Ooh. and he's doing it at four four point three yards a clip, mm-hmm. right? So he's he's having a really good year. And what does Washington not do well? They don't stop the run. 29th in the league against the run. Oh, Washington gosh. is we again we talk about how bad the pass defense is. They're actually uh fourth in the league in pass defense, Washington is. That's so they're great. not as bad as you think. We get caught up a lot in it. But again, look at who they've played, right? They haven't played that many good quarterbacks um and then they've got of course calvin ridley as their number one receiver and then oh, about they've got that westbrook akine who yeah. has only 17 catches but six of them are for touchdowns mm-hmm. yes that's crazy got that's, six uh, that's, that's the one that's gonna give you your benjamin saint juice play trev that's the yeah. one well two weeks ago I, i'll put a dollar on that too <laughs> yeah. okay two i'm gonna put a dollar that it's it's westbrook who's gonna is gonna be posterizing benjamin saint juice sometime this <laughs> yeah, game because Lattimore will lock ridley down well, Lattimore's not playing i don't think he's playing he's playing um yeah two weeks ago that uh westbrook akine had uh, a 98 yard touchdown yes. so if he that happened, Will Levis dropped the bomb, and it was a beautiful pass. I'm not gonna yeah. Lie. So, I, I I'm nervous. You know, talking about it, looking at again, it's the biggest game of the year. It's a code red game. It's a team you're supposed to beat. Your entire season rides on this. You can't go into the bye with four straight losses, sitting at oh, seven man. and six, and all of that. Ooh. You absolutely have to. This is a desperate team right now. Washington is a Ooh. desperate team. At home against a bad team that's really not playing for anything other than trying to develop their quarterback, right? And uh, so having thought about it, I think it is one of those games where if Washington loses, I will drink coffee with a dollop of mayonnaise in it because no, it ain't happening. Because that's the like grossest <laughs> thing ever. Washington is not losing this game. I'm even going to give my score prediction right now. Washington wins the game uh, fairly easily. This is one of those games like last week. I told y'all they're not blowing Dallas out. Sure. I said that uh, that's not going to happen, right? This is one of those games. I don't think they're going to blow them out, but they're going to start a whole lot better. And it's going to be kind of a cruise game, not a cruise game, kind of. So they're going to be up by 10, 11, 12 points most of the game. And then they finish the game, winning the game 27 22, just like they did against the Giants. Oh, man. All right, Trev, we got one yeah. Washington victory coming from Stoner, who's put the mayo in the mug if yeah. Washington can't <laughs> win this one. Trev, right. what, do you, what do you got here? I got Washington winning this game. Um, I say like 31 to 16 type feel i think we'll get punched in the mouth because that's what happens Mm -hmm. i think we'll wake up and respond earlier than the fourth quarter and we'll come out and just take over the game for the rest of the way we've got a few people answering here for us in the chat matt with 37 21 p and w with 35 12 gregory at 27 23 
And Josh going against the norm here, 27-17 Titans. Uh, Joel, who won our two hundred dollar fanatics gift card a couple or a couple weeks ago, Stoner's gonna Stoner's gonna hit you up. Don't worry about it, Joel. We did get your email, so we'll take care of that. Uh, So, but he's saying twenty seven twenty. If you don't put a team, I always assume it is the good side. Gus with twenty seven to zero Washington first shutout of the year. I was hoping Dallas was going to be the first shutout in nearly what. Almost two decades at this point. It's been a long time since Washington had one. JG with 21 10 commanders. I also am going to go with the commanders for a clean sweep. Washington defense, including the run defense, as my voice changes there from uh, the congestion I'm dealing with. The w- Washington's rush defense actually hasn't been bad through three quarters. Now the question is can they stay good in the fourth quarter? And that is going to be the big challenge for this team. Can they put away the Titans early? Can the offense get to a point where the defense can actually relax? I think that happens this game, but I don't necessarily think it's going to be firing on all cylinders. I'm going to go with Washington 25, Titans 18. Mm. That's an odd score. All right. I like yeah, it. I'm predicting a lot of field goals from Washington, stalling out against a good defense. You know, maybe be moving the ball a little bit better, but they've had issues when they've gotten into positive territory. Even last week against Dallas, they they were had good field position quite a bit and weren't able to move the ball. I think they're going to be able to move the ball, but I think we're going to run into issues, especially if B Rob isn't fully healthy and the play calls remain the same. But I'm still going to take Washington here. Nelman coming from Facebook, 31 14 Washington. Nelman also mentioned black jerseys. Uh, we broke the curse against the Chicago Bears, so I don't want to hear any of that mess when it comes to it. But hopefully when you join us and join that conversation on our instant reaction after the game, we will have something good. Stoner won't have to drink mayonnaise coffee. I'll be back in a onesie after, what, three, four weeks now. So hopefully yeah. that is there. So we will be live, as I said, right after the game. Join the conversation right here on YouTube and Facebook. We appreciate everybody jumping out for that. Tennessee Titans at Washington this weekend. We're the favorites. We've got to win.